Hi everyone, a very good afternoon to you all. Welcome to another exciting session by Digital Vidya. Uh, for the people joining in for the first time, you all are on mute by default. If you have any queries, you can just type in, in the questions tab, which is there on the right hand side. We'll pick up your questions once we are done with the presentation. That's approximately after around 35 to 40, 45 minutes. Um, so the topic for today's session is performance communication, the key to creating content that inspires action. And we have Ranjeev Vich, the head and head brand strategy and digital innovation of Z Zeno Grow. At Zeno, Ranjeev's role comprises of managing and expanding performance communication capabilities in India and the re region with data and analytics at the heart of it. Furthermore, he is also in charge of building operating and operating social media content hub and analytics capability for key, key clients to gather insights so, yeah. for real-time personalized performance communications. So um, Ranjeev, I'll just hand over the session to you and you can start the session. Um, so we start with the queries once we are done with the presentation. Uh, thank you, Divya. Thanks for this. Uh, thanks, uh, Digital Vidya team. Uh, I'm pleased to get this chance to come and share my learnings with all of you. Uh, just to give you a bit of background about myself, uh, my name is Ranjeev Vij. Uh, I'm an ex-ad lander who switched to digital a few years ago. Uh, when I started Proximity, it's a digital arm of leading advertising network BVDO. Uh, in my last role, I started digital marketing service practice for Cognizant in Europe. Currently, I head brand strategy and digital innovation at Zeno Group India. Zeno Group is a global integrated communications agency born from PR, part of DJE family and a sister concern to Edelman. We focus on communication, be it in the form of PR, content, digital campaigns, uh, through influencers, employee advocacy programs, or any other form. For us, the core, our core strength lies in delivering fearless work that transforms businesses by exceeding brand objectives. And to deliver on it, we follow data agnostic approach and advanced predictive analytics. We believe in creating fearless work and are always in the pursuit of achieving the unexpected. Today's session, as mentioned by Digital Vidya team, is all about achieving the unexpected. It's all about creating content that inspires audiences to act in favor of your brand KPIs. We know it's tough. Performance communication helps address this with the use of data and analytics. Each brand may have its own objectives for communications and seek audience action. This action could be creation of user-generated content, demand generation, getting like shares on your brand's content, participation of audiences in conversation, or help change their behavior. First, let's understand what is that performance communication delivers. Performance communication helps in three ways. It helps in eliminating guesswork out of content marketing. It empowers the brands to be agile and remain relevant. It enables brands to create real-time content that inspire action. How do we do it? I'll come to this a little bit later, but before we move forward, I want to showcase two case studies two pieces of work that we are proud of. And just to give you an example, what success looks like with performance communication. First example is about Fox TV. That's a client in Malaysia. It's, you know, for their popular TV series, Walking Dead season seven. Before the season was launched, our team used data to identify what excites the audiences who love this series? We figured out that these audiences were a bit geeky. They love technology. They love experiences. Using these insights, we encourage the audiences to register for the Riding Dead virtual reality drive experiences that promise an experience of a lifetime. In Malaysia alone, we reached out to some 56,000 Grab car passengers and uh, got some 701 people to take this experience. The campaign 
uh, was also converted into an online video and shared with media and other online platforms. We generated earned media PR value equivalent to 1 million USD. Here's a video for you to look at. Second video of the case study is an example from US. Uh, this is an example around a campaign uh, that became popular organically. Without using a single dollar, we actually were able to create a cultural movement for the brand called IZOD. IZOD is an apparel brand company in US. Now, this, there was this person called Ken Bone who asked a question around energy policy during US presidential debate. It was such a pertinent question that captured the hearts and minds of all Twitteratis. And Ken became an instant star. People started sharing and creating memes on this guy. The brand connect, when he asked the question, he was wearing a IZOD red sweater. The launch tweet started a purely organic movement across the internet. We capitalize on this buzz, transforming this internet meme into IZOD's cultural moment. Using social listening tools, we leveraged on the prevailing high sentiment around the elections. Also, a 15-minute TVC spot called Ken Bone's 15 Minutes, in which Bone encouraged people to get out and vote, was released. With not a single dollar spent, in the first five days of the campaign, IZOT gained earned reach worth 1.18 billion impressions, which would have cost the brand billions of dollars. IZOT also partnered with Twitter to create hashtag MyVote2016 along with Ken Bone Emoji, which proved to be one of Twitter's most successful promoted trends of the year, performing all hashtags by five times on an average. Let's see the video case today. What steps will your energy policy take to meet our energy needs while at the same time remaining environmentally friendly and minimizing job loss for fossil power plant work? Clearly, the winner of the debate uh, was the guy in the red sweater. And, uh, Ken Bones. I'm just a guy with a positive message. We want people who are devoted leaders. They listen to us through our votes, and they are forced to represent us. Everybody gets a voice. Everybody gets a government that works. I'm about as pumped up as I can get, and it's just fun letting it carry me. <laughs> Thank you. 
A quote from Jane Spentler, former president of CEO of Forbes.com, best defined the role of content. He said, today's digital media is all about content. Without content, there is nothing to search. Without content, there is nothing to aggregate. Without content, there is a whole lot less for folks to comment on. Such powerful words. And rightly said, without content, you have nothing to search, nothing to aggregate, nothing to comment, and nowhere. And this brings the question, how do we market this content that we create? Content marketing, as per the Content Marketing Institute, is defined as a strategically marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. The key is to drive profitable customer action. Content marketing is the practice of creating and publishing in own media channels as opposed to advertising. A radical shift in marketing thinking and marketing budget is occurring as companies shift spends away from advertising to content. The trend is towards pull rather than push marketing. It has been greatly accelerated by an explosion of owned media channels. Both those fully owned by the brands and social media channels in which brands largely control their presence and continually share entire audiences to action. But what is driving this shift towards content? If you look around yourself, we are adopting technology faster than ever before, which is changing the way our brains function or decides. And it's happening subconsciously. There are enough studies to prove that our subconscious mind helps us decide our cognitive activities, decisions, emotions, actions, behaviors. We take almost 95% of our decisions using our subconscious mind. In fact, this part of our limbic brain is responsible for all our feelings such as trust and loyalty. This area of the brain is responsible for all human behavior. Most importantly, decision making. It is where our emotional connections take place. And it's this part of the brain that has enabled us to adopt to changing technology faster than ever. We today are using more technology and more devices than before. In fact, some studies have suggested that the change technology has brought about in just last two years is more than previous 50 years. It's going to further grow even faster. I want to share two images from a similar event that took place in 2005 and again in 2013. Some of you might have seen it before. This is Purple Conclave in 2005. Tens of thousands of people waiting to know who will be announced as the new Pope. And the same scene in 2013, eight years hence, when Pope this was edited. See how people adopted technology. People are using phones to take pictures, videos, sharing it on social media profiles. You get to know about the news on Twitter before any media announce it today. All this is empowering marketeers with the abundance of data points <coughs> and opportunities for deep engagement. But this emergence of new world order has also changed the laws of the game. Fundamentally, everything that we do today still remains the same, but digital has made everything faster, most accessible, simpler, and cheaper. Digital has amplified everything we have always done to the power of millions. Now, people are using multiple screens at the same time and spending more time with devices than humans. Millennials and Gen Zs are demanding personalizations and immediate experiences that are mediated by technology. As a result, today, the human attention span has become lower than the goldfish. And most people are suffering from attention deficit syndrome. As marketeers, we have just three to five seconds to make an impression online. The question that comes up for marketeers, therefore, is how do we remain relevant and be part of the conversation ecosystem? Being able to deliver on-demand content in the accessible formats across many channels is simply the minimal table stakes. But just adding content is not the answer, which most agencies think. We need to create content that triggers our limbic brain. And with plethora of content being created around us by agencies or audiences, the content is king status has changed 
to content as junk. In fact, all put together, we are contributing to 2.8 extra byte of content junk every day. And to just give you a small view, in just one minute, 72 hours of YouTube videos are uploaded. And over 2.5 million pieces of content are posted on Facebook. And when you look at most shared content, it's shared on dark social. Almost 85% of content is shared on dark social. And yet, 90% of social media budgets goes to social networks, not on creating quality content. Dark social is the term used for sharing of content through private channels that can't be monitored, such as email, text, Skype, instant messaging apps, etc. And this relentless stream of content makes it harder than ever for a message to cut through the noise and get attention. This means that the dilemma of CMOs is more pressing than ever. And they are living in a world of constant hope. They hope the content they create is able to converge with the context. They hope they are able to identify the right content white spaces. They hope they could know that their content strategy is right. They are living in a constant hope. They are just hoping that they are able to deliver right performance they see. The best way to overcome this is to help audiences unveil the narrative piece by piece. Create content stories that work individually and holistically. To succeed, we need to make smarter use of earned, owned, and paid channels. Not only in how we tell a story, but what we amplify and spread, and thereby shift this hope to know. I know what I'm doing. I know this is right content strategy. I know this is right content theme. Just imagine a scenario like this. For us at Xeno Group, storytelling is fundamental, but that alone is no longer enough. We therefore build hybrid teams of technologists, brand planners, data scientists, creative people, content writers, and to create communications, not just measurable, but optimizable. Uh, this proprietary approach is called performance communication. It is a small video about that. on the video, we actually fuse data blended with the right technology and deploy meaningful human-centric campaigns to drive business results. Technology plays an increasingly vital role. It provides a platform on top of which our content creation and distribution team can operate. And if you are not using technology to drive decision making or efficiency, you'll be less creative and cost effective and you will lose. Performance communication help us create content where consumer interests and brand interests meet. It has to serve purpose for both audiences as well as the brand. Where data meets art, where science defines what themes would work, when it should be introduced, and on what channel, at what time, and art would paint stories of human interests that people are interested in. Performance communications removes hoping and help you create content that inspires action. Action around deep engagement, demand generation, behavior change, in our building brand reputation. Let me give you a few more examples of this. This example is about
director of The Social Network, Fight Club, and other groundbreaking movies. It was a big investment. TV shows cost a lot of money. And this one in particular, between Spacey, Fincher, and the rest of the cast, was built at dollar hundred million for just two seasons. Most decisions to give a green signal to a television series come down to the experience and gut intuition of executives. It's just plain hope. But Netflix had a secret weapon that ensured the investment would be worth it. Most television and movie studios judge success by few factors. They know how many people bought theater tickets and DVDs, and they see the reviews from critics and aggregator websites like Rotten Tomatoes. But Netflix knows a lot more. Because viewers watch through Netflix apps, the company knows exactly how many people make it all the way through its movies and shows. It knows when people pause or rewind and what watch next. Netflix not only knows what percentage of people who start suits are likely to watch several seasons, but it also exactly know what percentage of Suits fan are also likely to watch the blacklist. Through its data, Netflix knew three things. People who watch Kevin Spacey movies tend to watch all the way to the end. People who watch David Fincher movies tend to watch lots of David Fincher movies. And people who watch the British House of Cards tend to watch it all at once and all the way through. With this data, it didn't seem so crazy for Netflix to make the new House of Cards. And guess what? Based on the number of new subscribers Netflix picked up because of the show, the company, 100 million pet paid off in under three months. Since then, Netflix has used same data-driven performance-led approach to decide on lots of new shows. Orange is the New Black, Making a Murderer, Jessica Jones, Stranger Things, etc. The next case study is about Levi's. This is a campaign we did recently. We used a similar strategy by understanding the right data around topics being searched and shared on social media to create a relevant campaign for their new product targeted to women of all shapes. Levi's Shaping Series Jeans. A launch was planned in early March, and as most marketers would think, Women's Day was a great launch date. But we launched our campaign on 9th March, a day after Women's Day. This was designed with the help of data to avoid clutter and to enhance storytelling. Since our campaign was all about women who don't confirm the norms, giving them this message on Women's Day was a stereotype. Also, we used the topic of women empowerment, which many brands too were using. They were using celebrities to make generic feel-good statements about women's empowerment and not walking the talk when it comes to how it translates into real life stories. Moreover, many were also getting lost in content. We therefore decided to undertake a campaign where women from various walks of life, such as entertainers like Malika Dua, Huma Gureshi, transgender model Anjali Lama, and offbeat hairstylist Sampra Bhavnani talked about the way they have shaped their lives around the specific choices against all odds. Using the typical and spike in women centric conversations around International Women's Day, the campaign focused attention on the powerful stories around self made women influence and shape their own world. Women who don't listen to the world about their looks, performance, or relationships, and went ahead in their own turn. This campaign delivered a cumulative advertising value equivalent of 833 million INR. This woman also encouraged other women to create user-generated content and share their stories on how they are shaping the world. Here is one of the films for you. Growing up in uh, Bangalore, Bombay, I always had a shaved head, rode motorcycles. So people always took notice. People always spoke about me. So I've always loved hair. I think if you see my photos since I was one year old, I've had the most fashionable hair ever. 
I wanted to be a hairdresser because I wanted to give women something to hide under. And over the years, I decided, you know what? No. Now, why should they hide? So take it all off. I was so irritated by people always telling me that I didn't look like an Indian woman. So it was very important for me to destroy that entire notion of what an Indian woman is supposed to look like. And for me, the most important way of doing that was start getting angry. Nowadays, people have put this big burden on women that you have to be fearless. How can anybody in the world be fearless? You can't be fearless. Everybody has fear. But the beauty is to have fear and still move on through. The best you can be is by living your life to your roots. And the minute you start doing that and you don't kind of conform, you become a role model for yourself and that is what you want. If I want something, I just go get it. If you tell me I can't do it, I will do it. That just keeps me going. I'm Sapna Pratani and this is how I shape my world. Now, you can also also deliver performance communication with always on content. Use this approach to understand the content audiences. Of our clients. Times Internet is one company with a we understand about ET wealth and other Times Internet news properties to create infographics and insight based content for their social handles, which increased engagement rates by almost 8x. So what is the process of creating performance communication? We've spoken a lot about that. Let's understand how to deliver, how to do, what is the process? As explained earlier, our performance communication IP fuses right technology platforms to aggregate, analyze the data, to come up with themes that audiences would be interested in and when and where they would like to be served with this content. Using this robust customer data, you will be able to discover and predict new behaviors and patterns. What products are frequently searched online and purchased in stores? This analytics approach gives us deeper insights into our customers and their behaviors, their consumption patterns, etc. The key to performance communication approach is to be able to act upon your customer insights and optimize communications in the real time. Think about new ways of using data and storytelling to craft effective marketing messages so that you can reach out and interact with your customers in the way they see it and inspire action. It not only helps us to execute but also delivers to create a dialogue with customers using the right message at the right time at the right channel. Performance communication helps predict outcomes based on past data and helps create content that inspires action, measures its performance to optimize in the real time. That was about performance communication. Just to make you understand this bit more in detail, I would like to go through a small exercise. But before we get into exercise, I want to just share uh, some data points that we have used for the exercise. Now these are six different data points. The first one is, you know, most shared, the articles or the topics uh, which have been most shared by people. Second one is most covered, the number of times mainstream media outlets have written about these topics over a period of our consideration. Third one is most discussed number of times the topic has been mentioned on Twitter over this you know, period in uh, consideration, most blocked, most searched, and search delta. So
you think is right, and then I'll explain the logic and the answer. What are the topic of themes that you should actually go ahead with? I'll repeat the question again. There are five topics given here, and the scenarios are given in terms of whether it's high, low, in terms of the shareability, in terms of coverage, in terms of conversation, and in terms of search. You need to give me an answer which topic you should invest in and why.
I'll give you guys another three, four minutes and then I'll give my answer. One more minute. Okay, I'll just repeat the question again. Maybe some guys wouldn't have got it earlier. Uh, in this exercise, we have five topics and we have these four data points. Data one, shareability, whether it's high or low. Data point number two, whether the content topic, is there enough content in on the web? Topic, uh, you know, data point number three, is there high, conversation around this topic and number four is search volumes uh, now I think Nisha here gave an answer uh, which said that topic three is the best topic we should go with that's correct so data here actually tells us you know this is a topic which is high on searching and sharing but there is a very limited content. And the, since the content volumes are low, it gives us opportunity for great storytelling and creativity. This also help us deliver content that will be high in quality and performance. Now, a lot of people must be thinking, why not topic number one? Topic one is highly cluttered and competitive. If we create content on topic one, it would be difficult to be differentiated. And we'll be just adding to more content chunk and if you have to then promote it you'll have to put a lot of paid media budgets behind that to promote this content even topic number five is our next best bet. this topic has originated from online communities because there's a lot of conversations on Twitter and blogs and media is playing a catcher there is low content on medium we have strong opportunity here for delivering high performance content when we club this with influencer outreach. Levi's case study I shared before was in this space. Topic number four is well known and understood, but little new info is being added. Content can lead to performance here only if it matches predisposed thinking of the audience more work would be required to consider other data points to finalize on this theme. This data set is limited right now. And con topic number two, if you look at, is a clearly no. Sorry, I think there was a tech glitch. Uh, now, if you look at this example, we have data sets that 
tells us you know what is the reach of the content from topic one what is the media volumes number of tweets on that topic number of blogs the search volume and search data now when you look at this topic two clearly has highest number of tweets and search results with high search delta but relatively low on reach when you look at topic three which is high on articles which is the media interest and tweets but falls on search delta data inputs proves that this topic is losing its relevance and if you look at topic seven which is high on search volumes this indicates people interest and may be a good emerging topic to invest in with the right storytelling it can enhance both earned stories and conversations in social so what you learned today was the performance communication with the right data points and right data sets can help you come up with the right kind of strategy for content that can help inspire action yes at the same time the art part is equally important you can't create content without great storytelling it's evident to have great creative people great technology people data scientists all of them working in tandem to create content performance communication with the help of right data and analytics helps you create great content and move from hoping to knowing it also helps in terms of predicting winning topics it tells you what topics to avoid it tells you what your safe bets are you can merge old content to your digital channels if the data actually tells you it it can help you in terms of convergence of topic and challenge channel timing of your content when to do where to do and also take content beyond internet if you have created content which is performing why just rest it on internet the example i showed earlier about times internet dine out infographic that was covered by media through pr initiatives because it was interesting content for the audiences so performance communication as we learned today eliminates guesswork out of content marketing it enables actionable real time content that resonates with the audiences and empowers brands to remain relevant in a journey thank you for being a patient listener hope you have enjoyed today's session i can now take questions if you have any thank you so much ranjeet thanks for the great session we really love the case studies and the exercise so everyone if you have any questions just put in in the questions panel on the right hand side we will read i'll read out the questions for ranjeet and he will answer your query Um, so we also, if you have questions, my email ID is given. If you want to, you know, reach out to me in person, uh, I am happy to do that. So, Devika wants to know how do we identify good sources for content research? So, uh, Devika, we have to actually use uh, the listening. tools and also we need to actually look into what are the topics where the conversations are going on so my previous exercise that we did where we were looking at four or five different kind of data sources so that is one way to actually identify the theme okay and any tips for uh, to remain agile in content writing yes uh i think the agility of the content all depends on how fast you are able to you know develop content uh, there is an example i can actually give you uh, and if you are listening all the time from the chatter what's going on uh, ken bone case study that we saw uh, the second case study that was all about agility because the day this tweet this meme meme came out about ken bone this guy was wearing izod sweater we spotted that opportunity and created content you know 
tweets around that and you know created a 15 minute video with this person thank you, so you always on Sanjeev, you can continue. I'm sorry, I thought you were finished. No, I'm not finished yet, thank you. So there's a question from Prabhu. Does memes support performance communication? Mm -hmm. I would say yes and no. Uh, because you know it also depends on you know what kind of memes are you creating. Are you creating content that is relevant for your brand? and relevant for your audience that matters the most because if you are able to create content that inspires action i would say it's performance communication but if you're just creating a meme to uh, you know joke about some person it's not performance unless that meme really becomes big and comes out everywhere in terms of shareability media picks it up and it becomes a cultural movement. Thanks, Ranjeev. So another question, which is by Devika, she wants to know, can content marketer conduct research analytics or do we require specialists like data scientists in our team? Uh, data scientists are important uh, for this because you know, there is some bit of analysis you can do using tools, but uh, also what a data scientist can help, data scientists can create predictive modeling based on the current consumer behavior. Thank you. And Anubhati, Anubhati and Neerja wants to know any tips which you want to give for B2B businesses for content marketing? Even for B2B businesses, I would say you need to actually listen to what audiences are reading. From B2B perspective, there's enough content that's out there that you're creating. So from your past content behavior, what are people you know, reading, what they are downloading, uh, and also from the search volumes, what are the search volumes? So you need to always have some kind of benchmarking. You need to look into you know, different kind of data sources, what is interested uh, for the audience. In fact, for the B2B audiences, I would say that you need to go a step forward. You need to also do some kind of, you know, audit uh, with the audiences, do a research, understand their needs, what they're seeking. Uh, Times Internet uh, infographics was our attempt to what kind of content these B2B audiences were seeking. That platform is targeted to marketeers and we realize that marketeers want to know more about consumer behavior and what is uh, that people are reading and that kind of stuff. So we created infographics and content around that. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll just launch out for a poll for people who are in interested in digital marketing course. Uh, just fill out in a yes or a no if you are already a participant into the form. And I think we are done with the questions. We are act we actually had a little low number of attendees today. Um, so Sami wants to know if you can share your email ID again, Ranji. Uh, so my email ID is here below, uh, Ranjeev.wedge. If you look at the footer on the slide, if you can still see my screen. Ranjeev.wedge at xenogroup.com. So plenty of people have missed today's session. We'll share out the recording with the people who joined in late and who missed the session along with the presentation which Ranjeev has shared. Also, um, so if you have any question, we'll wait for another 30 seconds. You can just type in, in the questions tab. Otherwise, we can wind up the session. So, um, actually, Harpreet wants to redo the exercise a little. She actually is still doubtful whether we selected the option third above the option fifth, if I'm right, Harpreet. 
this this one we're talking about this so you know if you look at option 5 i've said that you know that's also important i'm not ignoring that but option number 3 uh, is high on search and also it's high on shareability so basically what people are searching if they come across a content they are just sharing it okay so because there is high shareability this is a there is a high need gap but very little content this is the ideal space but at the same time I'm saying that the topic number five is also important but in order to amplify because the shareability is low there are some conversations which are which are high on Twitter and high searches so you need to actually in order to increase shareability uh, involve some kind of influencers and that influencer outreach can then help amplify this kind of topic to become a uh, really performance led content thank you um, so um, another question is by dhriti she wants to know are there any norms we have we need to have to follow for b2c content and if someone doesn't know Google Analytics, is it, is it fine if they can create content without the data and without data science? Uh, people are doing that and there's enough junk already in the webosphere. So if you create data, you're just hoping, creating content, you're just hoping that this content would work. You're not sure. With data, you're just just eliminating that process and you are you know eliminating the guesswork and you're sure about what content would work sure thank you so much so we can just wind up the session um, so we had less number of attendees because of which the question round went out quickly